Hey, and welcome back to Bunter's Yard. And today I can um, quite safely say this is something just a little bit different. Today we are going to weather in a single uh, shot and against the clock, or with the clock running at the very least. So a few people have asked how long it takes to weather a wagon. To be honest, I don't really know. So I thought well, I would time this from start to finish. Uh, there's just one thing if you're doing um, this uh, sort of wagon if it's not painted like this you need to give it a coat of varnish otherwise the uh, weathering powder won't sort of stick to it if it's like a plain plastic one like a um, like a uh, railroad, like Hornby Railroad so here's the clock we shall start it running and there we go the clock is going so waltz and all um, I haven't practiced this and uh, it'll be a surprise and we'll find out together how long it takes to do a weathering so I'm going to pop the uh, the wheels off and the couplings I've taken off as well just uh, it makes it easier to sort of get around um, at the ends there and that's a bit more difficult than it should have been so first thing I want to do is on the sort of on the bodies on the planks is just to get a bit of contrast in there so I'm um, using this uh, sand um, from Vallejo Model Air and with that we're going to pop that in the airbrush and then we'll add a bit of sort of dust to it and you'll see what we're going to do in a sec now you can do this with a paintbrush, you don't need an airbrush um, if you do just um, just bear in mind that will take a bit longer to dry and you don't need to put so much on your brush but I'm just using an airbrush just for speed because it puts on a lighter layer and um, and so it will dry a lot quicker so I can continue putting further layers on as well so it's just a bit faster for me um, in that respect so we've got all around the, the panels now the idea of this is as I say just to add a bit of a dust and it sort of gets stuck in between the planks as you can see and uh, just makes it look a bit old and dusty really and that's that's the point you don't need to use this color you might want to use uh, you know just your normal color grime whatever that might be um, it's just to add a bit of texture to it really just to make it take the newness away now one additional thing we could have done on the sides maybe is just to have um, to weather the, the livery the logos there so we can do that either with a um, glass fiber brush or we could do that with um, with a sanding block like a Natamia um, sponges uh, they're very good for that they're inexpensive so this was done with a single shot there's no cuts in this video it's just being in to end um, anything goes wrong um, you can get to see it all so uh, like this for instance when I've uh, not got the wagon in the correct place in front of the camera so um, I can't always see what I'm doing unfortunately so do uh, do forgive me so inside, a bit of detail inside. Now, if I was, um, we had some more time to spare. If I wanted to do, you know, to do a slightly like, different job on this, then you could paint the planks individually inside, give them the wood effect or a worn wood effect. But we just want to get it dirty in there, so this is kind of sufficing for that. And this is the same sand uh, from Vallejo Air. Just um, paint it in and just wipe it back with a cloth or a tissue or brush, whatever you have. So during this uh, video, um, I say there's no cuts, so I'm going to clean the airbrush as we go, uh, changing from one color to another. So I'm using just that pipette you can see. That's just got clean water in, or cleanish water in. And if we just sort of judge it in and out like that, it will uh, take most of the paint up and away with it. So we'll do that a few times. And uh, that's gonna be good enough for a color change. And we color, we're gonna change from one shade of brown to another, so it's not really that important. So pop some water in there, some clean water, and we just blow it all through, and you can see it's coming out clear now. So that's pretty good. So we'll leave that for a second. Now we need to, um, you don't need to, it's just what I want to do, is um, just going to do a bit of dry brushing just to get some of the details of those uh, rivets uh, showing and i've had a problem with the lid for this silver so i've got it a bit stuck so i'm just going to stick something down the hole see if i can clear it i think that's uh, right, i've got it and we'll give it uh give it a little squeeze there we go that'll do um, 
Um, well, that, that wasn't supposed to happen, but um, I'm going to leave it in because I said it was uh, just kind of live, and it's you know part of the part of what we do. Things things go wrong, um, so I thought it was only fair to show it. Um, so I'm just going to get rid of that. And just make sure it's oh, clean my hands. Make sure it's not. I don't want to get all the model. Um, but anyway, don't want to waste the uh, the, the paint. That's the uh, Vallejo Air um, still, which is a metallic colour. Um, we can we can work from that. I think we can use that. We don't need a lot of it. So dry brushing, probably no. Put a little bit on your brush, and then we're going to wipe off as much as we can. Let's get rid of that now. So we'll brush that back as much as we can uh, until there's not a lot on it. Um, there's actually more on my fingers, I think, than there is on the brush now. And we just run it across, and it's just going to bring up some of that detail. Now, um, although it's silver and it's going to look a bit weird for now, um, the idea is that it's just showing it's going to create sort of a highlight. Um, so it will, it will define the edges of the of the raised sections. It won't necessarily show as uh, silver at the end, or it won't necessarily look like little bare metal. Um, but you know, if you don't want to do that, you you can uh, again miss this step out, or use a different colour. So you can use um, maybe a rust tone, um, like a lighter or orange rust colour, or uh, maybe a shade of grey. So it's just to just add a bit of contrast between. Um, the, uh, the the black and that raised detail. So that's uh, that's that bit done. Right, our next step is to get on some uh, some dirt, some grime colour of whatever colour you choose to do. Now we're going to use this one, which is brown violet, which we've used before. Um, I've got a selection of browns on the shelf, and that's just the one I kind of go to. It kind of suits that one, and dirt, they, they seem to work quite well. But again, you need to choose the one depending on the environment you're working in. So you might want to do lots and lots of black if it's going to be, you know, there's a coal wagon, for instance. Um, it's entirely up to you. So we're going to put a little bit on the, uh, on the um, axle boxes down the bottom there. And then we're just going to go lightly across the top just to create a bit of a sort of fade from the top down and then we're going to paint along the back as well so on the ends um, these are normally dirtier than the rest of the wagon normally dirtier than the sides from what I've seen so we can afford to go a little bit heavier on the sides and again we'll do the sides the, uh, the axle boxes there or the chassis or whatever you, whatever its correct term is And then a bit at the top, and maybe a couple of little runs and so on. Now I want to keep this fairly simple. This, so we're just using a couple of colours. Um, so this is the only other colour we're using in the airbrush. And we might as well pop a bit inside. I think we're going to put a load in this at the end anyway, so we're not going to see inside there. But just to, just to add a bit of texture inside, we just put a bit of colour in there, and we just wrap it back. It just kind of gives a bit of a worn effect in there. So that's it. Now while we've got the wheels off, we'll uh, we'll give them a little paint as well, and we'll use the same colour, um, which is the brown violet. It's just just a shade of brown that we need. Um, we're going to get a bit of powder on this anyway. Weathering powders at the end. Now the wheels would uh, normally um, sort of weather different. They would normally rust it different to the uh, to the chassis because they're going to be um, probably made of a different compound. They're probably, um, so yeah. So the, but the rust is going to be slightly different. So it may be darker or lighter. So just just check on your reference image if you're. Uh, oh, this is a bit more difficult than it should be. Um, just check reference image uh, for what you're modelling just to get that correct. So I always have a bit of a struggle getting the back on ones in. I'm not sure why that is. It seems to sort of, you don't get them in right. They uh, 
There we go. I think they've done it. Okay, so I've, because I'm, I'm we kind of rushing a little bit here, um, I'm knock some of the paint off. Normally, you'd let that dry quite a bit longer before we put that back in. There we go. We could have perhaps painted those in situ rather than take them out because they spin fairly freely. So we could have done it that way. But anyway, what's done is done. So that's the basics of the paint, I think. That's all we're going to do. And then we're going to get our weathering powders out. Um, you would have seen these on a previous video with all the, the num names of the paints and so on. I'll, um, I'll leave those in, again in the description down below. These are Vallejo uh, pigments from a rust set that they do. So there's four in there. They're quite useful. So those are those two light sort of orange colours. And there's a dark brown and also the, uh, the yellow the ochre which is quite uh quite useful actually so we're just going to add a bit of this orange uh rust the, the the brightest of the rust onto this um sort of angle at the corner here because that would uh that would get rusty i guess and because we're rubbing it slightly with the uh, uh with the q-tip it's going to leave um the raised areas are going to be cleaned off and then the rust is going to sound leave. so we've got some detail popping through and then we're using the dark brown um, weathering powder and we're just going to put that onto kind of the metal areas just to create that sort of dark old looking rust and then a little bit of the lighter color rusts which just um, makes it look as if it's still it's still rusting And along the bottom here, just a light touch of our Humboldt Dark Earth. And this just kind of ties it all in together. So um, rather than having a distinct line between the uh, the chassis and then the planks, kind of, it kind of unifies it just a little bit, I think. Touch of that on there. And then we'll brush all that off. There we go, and it just leaves a hint of, of the rust. Then on the uh, on the buffers, so a little bit of the bright rust on the buffers, and then the weathering powders uh, along the bottom. Again on the on the ends of the wagons, we're going to just uh, be a little bit heavier with the weathering powders because they generally are a bit uh, a bit dirtier than the rest of the wagon. All right, back in focus again. Uh, so I'll show you again. So we've got the dark rust on the uh, on those axle boxes down there. Now I'm not putting too much on at a time. I'd rather do uh, sort of more more passes uh, with a little bit each time rather than doing one big chunk and then spending ages trying to get it off. Because these powders, especially the Vallejo ones, they uh, you get them on too heavy and they are, become a bit of a nightmare to, to sort of clean back. So just be um, just be a, a bit sort of uh, easy, easy going with it to start with. How are we doing for time? 13 minutes, so that's not bad. We're almost finished, so uh, this could be under 15 minutes. So this is pretty much the same as the other side. Just they all back. And then the final stage is the end. Now once this is done, it depends on how you're going to use your wagon. If it's going to sit on the, your track forever, it's just it's probably back on the track and it's done. If it's going to be handled quite frequently, you may want to give this a coat of uh, a matte varnish. And that will just sort of seal everything in and uh, ensure that it doesn't sort of kick all over your fingers and everything. That's the last thing you want to do. So pop them back in, in their pockets. Now because I took them off there, they've not got any paint. So I'm just going to get some, uh, still got the brown violet in the airbrush. Give them a quick 
just something just to uh, take that black newness away. It, we're pretty much done. Um, I'll call that done. I think we'll leave the clock running for a second. Um, just going to put some uh, some coal in there. And that's it. We are finished. 14 minutes 52, including uh, cleaning the airbrush, we're getting all the silver paint off my hands. Uh, so thanks for watching. Uh, hope that was useful. We'll speak to you again very soon at Bunter's Yard.